The photographs collection is housed in the Round Tower here in Windsor and compromises around half a million items, spanning chronologically between the early 1840s, so pretty much the, the birth of photography itself, all the way down to the present day. One of the largest holdings we have is by Dorothy Wilding. Dorothy Wilding photographed many members of the royal family, from the Queen to Princess Alice, uh, Duchess of Gloucester, Princess Margaret, and of course, George VI and Queen Elizabeth, and many others. She was born in 1893, and she came from a large family in Gloucester. She really wanted to be an actress, but that wasn't a thing to do in those days. So she started training as a photographer and learned a particular technical part of photography, which is retouching, which is as old as photography itself. So once she'd mastered that, she started to set up her own studio. By 1923, she had moved to Bond Street. While thing was very strong-minded, she had to be to succeed. I think the fact that she was a woman was also liberating in a way. More women were more likely to come to the studio to be photographed because it was more comfortable for them. Dorothy Wilding brought to the scene a very new, very modern style, which was particularly remarkable from a graphic perspective, which made her work particularly easy to translate into a different medium, normally print, for newspapers, magazines, but also materials such as stamps and currency. When Edward VIII applicated, it happened very suddenly, so there was an urgent need for new portraits. Because the official portrait is not just a likeness, it's also it's an icon. Many photographers were considered, and they decided she would be very good to photograph the Queen. And this is where the slight like, gender bias came in. Well, I normally photographed her sitters in her studio, but on this occasion, she had all equipment and all her lights and cameras taken to the palace, into the music room. While she was photographing the Queen, she wasn't aware that the King was actually watching. And then she heard a noise and this little commotion. So she turned around and said, Your Majesty, don't you think the Queen looks a little lonely standing there without you? If you joined her, I can make such a lovely portrait of you both. And he promptly stepped forward and joined the Queen on the stairs. They both looked so happy. <laughs> Wilding used very strong and harsh lighting in a studio and using such strong lighting means that the features of the sitter's face would be highlighted beautifully. However, that also means that every single line or even minute uh, blemish would be recorded by the camera. Retouching could be very minimal, just a question of perhaps cropping or tidying up the image, just removing a curl of hair, all the way to erase one of the person after the portrait or perhaps create a double portrait from two single portraits. George VI dies in Sandringham in 1952 and Wilding was asked to do photography of the new Queen. She was booked to come in 11 days after the funeral. Many photographs were taken, I think it was at least 20 or 30 poses were taken. So they decided, actually, none of it was quite right, that they would ask the Queen if she would she mind having a photograph taken again. So that was arranged for April. And this time she wore a different dress and a different tiara, a coronet, not a crown, because she hadn't been crowned yet. It was really important to get the right photograph that would actually encapsulate all the things about British crown, majesty, dignity, authority. Dorothy Wilding was very much important, but over, over time her name was forgotten perhaps. But some of her work, in particular the work that she did in 1952, creating the new image for or the new queen, still remains and will always remain iconic.